people that, you know, like, like three foot hobbit hologram dude is like so menacing. <laughs> and he walks, he, he like puts his hands on his hips and he's got, he's like even faced with the guy who's on his knees. And he says, do you understand how much danger you're in? And you know, the guy agrees and he's like, here's the deal. You're going to go with these men and they're going to fly you back to me. And you work for me now. He goes, gentlemen, I need you to secure the scene. Uh, rest of Warlock Company is dropping in. We're going to secure the scene. Uh, we're getting an engineer crew in here to rebuild this building. He goes, uh, we're going to need a costume change for you guys. You guys are going to load up into some MCR kit. We're yeah, going to uh, uh, stage a little ambush. Uh, and uh, there's a big, uh, there's a big uh, you know, dramatic flourish of music as the screen goes. And welcome aboard the Galaxy's Edge podcast, where we're playing uh, Cat Task Force Loki as Warlock Company. Last time, uh, our boys raided a major industrial complex where weapons were being manufactured, ass kickings were being handed out, and uh, JR kept uh, uh, trying to curb stomp a mechanized infantry unit. Uh, uh, let's you see. do. Yep, MCR kit now requires skin skin tight shiny leotards. Yes, it does. Uh, oh boy! So Wait, does uh, that mean I have to switch sides? Uh, I'm not going there. So, <laughs> uh, starting off, we have uh, murder, murder hobo with a squirrel fetish. We have J.R. Hanley, author of The Reservist. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing outstanding. Outstanding. And uh, how how deep uh, were you after last night? Word count, uh, word count, bro. I only got 500 words after everything, but I did have a couple of shots of some some really fine Virginia gentleman whiskey. So, right on, right on. Uh, shaking his head and uh, uh, trying to keep the dad look off his face, we have this guy <laughs> playing Gino. <clears throat> howdy, howdy, howdy! I'm ready to uh, to try to corral the murder hobo and keep him on track. Right It'll on. be fun. Good luck like with you. that. Like you do. Uh, we have Dark Ops 91 Archangel playing Mags. How are you, sir? Pretty good. Ready to shoot some more people in the face area. <laughs> in the, like, facial area. Yeah, uh, I'm, not, I'm not picky. He, he, he like, just giving out facials. That's all. Uh, I, nope, not going there. <laughs> just uh, remember, the Dalai Lama says two in the chest, face gets the rest. That's right. Uh, we have Bubba uh, playing Moray, our hacker. How are you, sir? I'm doing okay. And uh, as our tactical operations specialist, uh, Quinn, uh, being played by Dark Ops 5550. Well, hello there. Right on. And as you saw in our clip uh, uh, for last time, you guys had secured the scene. Uh, you have uh, control of the MCR base. And uh, you get, uh, uh, you know, you guys are basically uh, uh, off in the corner where all of the munitions are. And you, you're resuiting up into some of this MCR oh, kit. <laughs> What's that? I say what? Uh, my favorite place. Yes. So you guys are resuiting into this uh, this MCR gear because um, you know that you have buyers on the way for these these crates over here on the sides uh, that has uh, all sorts of uh, munitions in them uh, by way of uh, aero precision missile launchers, which are normally Legion kit. Very, 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 very nasty stuff that should not be in the hands of the MCR. Um, so you guys have, uh, um, they rebuild that center building, uh, this building right here, because you guys crashed into the roof, uh, last time and, and basically blowed it up. Uh, also you had these two mechs, uh, shooting at each other and, uh, uh, you, straight through it. Yeah. You kind of ripped the building down. So yeah, there was that and all, all that in a bag of donuts. So, um, once you guys get suited up in your new kit, uh, it's basically gray and, and, uh, like light gray and dark gray. 
um, MCR plate carrier style armor. So you have a, a plate carrier in the front. You have some shoulder daps with uh, uh, some forearm bracers. You got uh, some leg pauldrons and then some shin guards. So if you remember uh, the movie Aliens, it's a little bit like that, um, just a little more coverage. And uh, you you do not have full face helmets. Um, if you put on a full face helmet, uh, it's going to give you guys away as uh, not being part of this crew. Um, some of the techs from Warlock Company are posing as technicians on the ground. And of course, uh, you got this nerd right here who is singing like a canary. He's been extracted and is now uh, getting debriefed uh, off site and is probably going to be returned to you to act as your lead technician. So you guys doing anything because, uh, you know, you guys have incoming members of like some crime groups looking to buy these AP missiles and, you know, uh, uh, do you guys remember what what these missiles were set up to do uh, the last time? Because they so were, they, yeah, they please, were meant I, to be anti personnel, right? Not anti vehicle. They no, were no, meant no, to the, be biological ones. Oh, yeah, that's there, right. There was a portion of the warhead that was removed uh, and empty, so that anything could be put in there. So, yeah, and uh, you know, from last uh, from some of the last sessions, uh, you guys had uh, some dealings with some biological agents that were being used and being manufactured. So this could be a, a really nasty delivery system, uh, especially in, in uh, like an urban area. All right, so what do you so guys what, do? Go ahead. What, what do we have for uh, deployable assets? All right, so um, they come in. This mechanized uh, unit right here um, is down for the count. You guys yeah. murdered the crap out of that thing. Uh, the only thing really salvageable was one of the cannons on its arm that uh, you guys shot off. Uh, so that one's not going to be in play. This one is still salvageable. Uh, they're using your technicians to rig it up. And uh, for those of us just joining us for the first time, <laughs> Scott's like, so they're filled with MREs. Uh, yeah, basically biological agents to go into the missiles. Yeah, you got it, Scott. Um, so uh, last time you guys uh, uh, you basically broke those two mechs. Uh, so those two mechs aren't going to be here. But as part of Warlock Company, which is one of the premier um, uh, bounty hunter guilds inside of the Bronze Guild, uh, you guys have asset, uh, access to pretty considerable assets. So they're going to repatch these. They're going to quickly rebuild this center building and try and get it back to as, as far as you can. Um, but they're going to need you guys to pose as MCR guys. Oh. So. Yeah, I please. actually have an idea. So first off, are we in roll 20 for the map so I can show you easier? Uh, yeah. All right. Is it the um, Raven Spear one? Yep. All right. Perfect. So the bottom left quad quadrant, quad there, that space where we came in at originally, if yep. we take the arm that was shot off of the mech that's down, could we set it up to be a crew served weapon in that area? Uh, I like you, this man. You could. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Uh, if right. you have the capability to do so, you're going to need somebody with a heavy tech, uh, tech background. Heavy tech uh, or heavy well, weapons? Because I'm a SAB expert. Uh, well, um, that's like, uh, JR, that would be like saying, um, I am an awesome machine gunner and somebody walking up to you and saying, hey, can you dis... Uh, can you disassemble the uh, Mark 19 and 50 cal in that turret and bring it over here? Like, I could do that. <laughs> All right. All right, we can work it. So, uh, Walt, where are they going to be yes. coming from? Are they going to drop in here? Or are they <laughs> going to be uh, coming in from down here? So, uh, the the area where you guys where you just pinged, uh, that particular area is um, the main entrance for the facility. You guys came in the sneaky back way on this side. Hmm. So, um, uh. So they're not going to drop down to the, the the roof. No, no, no. They're not going to come through the roof. They're gonna they're oh. gonna uh, come in through this through this area right here, and you guys are, are yep exactly. They're gonna come right out of that little corridor, go over the little bridge, and they'll they'll meet you up here by the crates. Hey, right, Quinn. can we drop the uh, can yeah. we drop the mech we borrowed from Murder Barbie? Whoa, whoa. Do you need to. <laughs> well, I mean, we have the not... one that we bought. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, JR, can you mute yourself in the roll twenty? Because <laughs> I just got like you. <laughs> yeah, you I was getting doing that all... too. Yeah. Oh, thank anyways. God! I, thank God I muted all you guys. <laughs> yeah. How do I do that? Uh, uh, all right. So, are you looking at my screen right now? You should be able now. to hover over your picture, right? See, right. So you can either go over your picture, 
right? And it'll let you mute it. It won't do, let it do uh, mine. Or you can go into the interface right here. Go to the little settings wheel. There you go. See, you did. All right, cool. All, All right. right. So, so now right, that's so, out of the way. Uh, I, so uh, can we place the, the mech we own that's not been dinged up in combat to uh, cover the choke point at the entrance? Well, I, was, I actually have a, uh, another idea that, that maybe Quinn could do. Okay. And that is set up this, this whole bridge right here mm-hmm. with like a whole bunch of boom boom and uh, <laughs> just let it just let it sit there in case it's needed. And then we can have the mech as a, <laughs> as a support thing. I'm down so, with that. So the, the bridge, how wide is that river? Because it looks like you could just jump it. In some pa- spaces, yes, you can jump it. Uh, so, in other spaces, it's 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 considerably wider. Probably remember, about- a mech fell down yeah. in you know a skinny looking spot like right there. Yep. So in some fair, spaces, fair it's a little wider, and uh, it's uh, what do you call it? Uh, at the widest point, right before that bridge, it's about ten meters. Okay. okay. So yeah, that makes a little bit of sense. The other part is, do we have something equivalent of a bouncing Betty? What do you got, Quinn? Um. I let me look because that's that is a good good question. In the words of our favorite one of our favorite authors, Rick Partlow, we want to go wholesale slaughter on these people if we have to. <laughs> of course you do. So I've got for for when it comes to munitions, I've got microfraggers, uh, a micro banger, um, charge blocks. I think I have. Well, I'm assuming since you know they're bringing guys in, I can get a, a refresh on armament. Yep. Um, yep. So if so you I'm, want to request stuff, you just go ahead and request it. Oh, the oh oh man, that is wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Like, so uh, access. That's what happens when you work for a big crew. I mean, I'm just saying. Well, yeah, then well, I would well, like I, to have any new updated tech to to hack stuff with, then, if possible. Well, I mean, <laughs> I need something to compensate for my <laughs> shit rolls. <laughs> Well, uh, I don't have it in my kit, but yeah, that's we can uh, we can we can ask Papa Daddy if he's got some extra laying around. You looking for a whole new bang? Um, a whole new bang. So, what are you looking for? Like landmines? Uh, a first mines. Yeah, let's go with the. Uh... Oh, let me look here. Um, let's go with four anti personnel. Um, like tripwire, and then let's go with three bouncing betties. You talking mines on all those? Yes, sir. Okay, because just remember, you still have all those charge blocks, right? Which are like big blocks of C4 mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. All right, so you got four AP mines and uh, four bouncing betty mines. Um, as as you guys are putting in the request, you know, you get the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, one of the holograms pops in. Um and uh, it's a woman, probably in her early to early to late twenties, early thirties. Uh, she's like covered in dirt and grease, and you see her directing people over the hologram. Uh, you've dealt with her before. Uh, her name is Nayla. She looks over to you, and she's like, she's like, all right. So I, no, 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 no. Put it there. Don't make me come over there and slap the sense into you. She goes. They're telling. Hold on. They're telling me that you need charge. You need explosives. Yes, ma'am. You go. She's like, don't you? Don't. Oh hell no! Don't you call me, ma'am. She's like, uh, what kind of explosives you need, son? Uh, so I'll, I'll relay that I need uh, anti personnel, uh, like trip wires and some mines. You give her. You give her your stuff. Yes, sir. All right, so then uh, she sits there and she says, so that I'm only making one trip. Get with the rest of your crew. I need a, a, I need a shopping list. She's like, right. she's like, Scrapper does his thing and, you know, go, he tries to field requests, but if I'm going back and forth trying to get a shopping list together and you guys keep adding to it, it's going to take time. She's like, write it down, get it once, and whatever you do, don't let Hammerhead anywhere near it because then uh, – there, there were times that he tried to pack C4 and, and, and a blow-up doll, and it just got weird from there. So get, hit me back when it's all set, and then she kills the connection. So there, there goes your, uh, your what do you call it, your logistics tech. She starts, uh, she starts putting your things together. Uh, so what are, you guys, what are you guys requesting? So we want six SABs 
that are uh, the bracket, <laughs> listen to me the Pencil bracket, mounted sabs no, the brackets to mount them from the ceiling and to slave them to one operator so we can manually control them as as turrets why do you say we when you when really you, know you say me. you <laughs> we already have access to three mechs what's why do we need more sabs yes well because why not we want this to be a murder. <laughs> like this is going to be a death trap if it's. Well, we wrong. also don't want to give it away that oh, someone else came in here and decked this place out, ready to slaughter. No, you know, no, 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 no. Get to be fair, they had four mechs. We we totaled two of them, so I I don't think it'd be out of the ballpark to have no, a couple so, of mounted turrets. Around. So so here's the deal. There there's no way we hide that we came in here and wrecked shit up. So all we do is yeah, they attacked and we beat them back and then we hardened our defenses. Easy peasy. Well, we can and easily what, do that with the dead bodies. Like look what the five what of dead us bodies? did. The cleaning yeah. crew came in. Yeah, they, <laughs> No, they if he's up. saying okay. He, w five of us wrecked this place. We got to make it so five of people equivalent to us can't come and do it too. Oh, now, now to to go to what JR is saying, you know, even though the, the the cleaning crew came in and they pulled all the bodies and stuff like that, there has obviously been a huge fight here. You guys listen it up. That's a normal Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair enough. But but our cover story is we had to make it safer. Yeah. We're, we're protecting. Yeah, we, got, we got pushed, I, and we repelled. We repelled attackers, and now we uh, we sh we strip them and use their stuff for uh, defense. <laughs> I agree, Nathan. All right. So, yes. yeah. what other what other equipment are you requesting? Six sabs, pentels to mount them from the roofs, and whatever tech we need to slave them together. Okay. Uh, hey, well, else? what is? Okay, uh, wait, wait, wait. Can we make it four and then have? Two of them with tripods that we can set up. And well, we already have the the mech arm, or the cannon from the mech is set up on a tripod, right? So, and I've got my own personal one that I can set up. So these are just for the roof, right? Well, I'm saying like Quinn, you're looking Quinn wants Quinn wants other ones that, that he can maybe hop room. on. So on how many hey, do you need? I'm thinking six to cover the the whole area. That's why I was thinking we could create a spread. I would well, say I was, I was I, just one here and then one somewhere on the rooftop over here. Okay. Uh, what other what other what other tech do you got? So, uh, uh, well, I have what's, a question. what's the? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, um, what? One at a time, kids. <laughs> one at a time. Archangel, go. Okay. What's the difference between a normal fragger and a micro fragger? Is there any difference in yield? Yes. Uh, spread. Uh, the microfraggers are meant to be carried so that you can wear them under a jacket and stuff like that, and you don't look like um, like a uh, a Walmart arms sale dealer kind gotcha. of deal, right? So they're they're thin. They're about thirty millimeter. They're a little shorter, a uh, little thinner than a uh, than uh, one of the M two hundred three grenades. Uh, they're small. They're only about five six inches long, and they. Uh, uh, let me get. As a request from uh, supply, I want two of each. I want two fraggers, two bot poppers, and two full size bangers. Why don't you just ask for a crate? Yeah, I was trying to make a list, and you start going into that. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> go for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I mean, I get it. We can get a crate of each, and then just divvy them up between us. Yep. Yeah, I got. Good. I have no frags on me. All I got are <laughs> bangers and and uh, some micro crackers. All right. Um... Anybody else? Uh, uh, Moray, did you say that you needed uh, you needed? Uh, if I could have any kit? updated, yeah. If I could have any updated uh, slicing kit, uh, uh, you you pretty much have top of the line. You're not going to get better than what you have. But what they'll okay. do is they'll install some uh, some firmware upgrades real quick. So that yeah, way that's that's kind of what I meant. That's kind of what yeah. I meant. You'll get Can some regroup functionality. Is there uh, to get the parts to bring the uh, two mechs that we didn't destroy? Um, back to fully functional. Dude, one of those mechs went down the went down the river. It's gone. Yeah, you you guys don't have the you guys don't have the uh, the time <laughs> for that. Okay. Two right. two of those mechs were never weren't even damaged from small arms, anyways. So right. we still have two fully functionals that they had. So we need uh, ammo for those. Oh no, they're uh, gonna they're gonna blaster. Okay. So oh, um, for 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 me uh. Is there after after the the dog quits howling because he's I, I a mean, dick? Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, 
what what I uh, was wondering is, can I get some uh, some special kind of ammunition for my MCR Warpath rifle? Yeah, what uh, do you need? I would like at least uh, two magazines of non-lethal rounds so that I can do sleep sleep from from <laughs> far distance, and then uh, probably about four magazines of I don't know something that can go through things and cause boom boom, like even more than the regular. Because I'm assuming the MCR Warpath is uh, <laughs> is essentially like 50, 50 caliber, right? Oh, it's big. Yeah, it's big. It's 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 a nasty, nasty rifle. You guys are. Uh, it's it's the thing you put down when you want to reach out and uh, and smudge somebody from long range. I I don't we... remember. Were were the MCR using slug throwers or blasters? They're using blasters. Okay, they're using blasters. Yep. Can we get right. some bubble shields for all of our uh, gun emplacements that are not mounted on the roof? Uh, no. Damn. Okay. So then, uh, you tried. Then if, then if uh, my uh, sniper rifle's blaster, then uh, I just need to get uh, some uh, ion charges, charge packs, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So ion yeah. charge uh, packs is cool. Should um, I dress up as one of the techs, or should I stay in full kit? I would say the tech. Uh, you're gonna want some uh, some Under Armour for that. Yeah, uh, I'll definitely take some of that. All right. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, that's another thing. If we're if we're taking the kit off of the dead um, MCR guy. Oh no, you're not taking dead kit. You're taking like new kit. New kit that they <laughs> freshly that they manufactured. Oh, kit. they're bringing. Okay, so they're oh, bringing yeah. us new so, kit, so, so we don't have to worry about um, genuine not enough special. armor. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And, and and you're also not we're not having to like plug up the holes that you made in one guy's uh, chest rig and stuff like that. Spend ten right. minutes wiping off blood and cauterized <laughs> dust. Yep, exactly. You're not doing any of that because they have a they have a guy for that. Um, Fancy. And can we get some of those pancakes you promised us last time? <laughs> so I'm I'm actually going to once we. Once I give my piece about what we're going to do, um, mm -hmm. these munitions that are still sitting over here. Yep. Uh, They're AP I missiles. I don't know if anyone else is doing it, but I'm going to do a, a inventory check. Just see how many it is. Write a list down, lot numbers, all that jazz. Gotcha. That's good. That's good thinking. Take a uh, temporary competency die for that. All right. So um, they do a uh, they do a quick drop. Um, they send a. Uh, they send a, uh, a hot drop in through the ceiling, so it's basically a uh, uh, one of the uh, the slicks comes over and just and just uh, ropes down a couple of huge cases. Um, uh, what's that? Uh, oh, thank Ober. Walt is starting the proper hat too. Yeah, well, you know, KTF. Uh, so uh, inside the crates, uh, they brought you uh, uh, the four AP mines and the four bouncing Betty mines. Uh, More, you're your upgrade was pushed through um, uh, was pushed through the net, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, did you have a question, Gwen? Oh no, I'm I'm just giddy about more boom boom. <laughs> <laughs> um, they did not give you your 64 um, SABs mounted on on mechanized legs with uh, uh, drone operators to to cover all the ceilings. What they well, did what's the point of them then? Uh, right. What they did give you was uh, two spider mechs. So it looks like uh, basically a weapons platform with uh, like crab legs. And these things can actually uh, like sink the legs in and create pitons at the bottom to allow them to walk up vertical stone surfaces like the caves you guys are in. Um, and those have uh, two heavy sabs on them. Uh, those can be remote controlled from the uh, from the battle boards on your armor. Um, you. Uh, you have uh, the two frags, ions, and bangers that you guys requested for extra grenades. And then um, uh, for your warpath, uh, you have the two mags of non-lethal and two and four mags of API. I just looked. The, the warpath is a, is a <laughs> munitions rifle. Nice. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So uh, those, those APIs are armor-piercing incendiary. Mm. I would like to uh, file mm, a complaint yes. up the HR chain about the lack of those sabs. I, I want to just file an official grievance, and then we'll move on. Gotcha, gotcha. They'll probably I'd direct you to murder Barbie for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So you guys have, have basically reset things. You have a couple of your um, you have a couple of your guys from Warlock Company posing as uh, posing as security guards. You have a couple guys posted as uh, um, uh, what do you call it? technicians, and you're kind of resetting yourselves, putting yourselves uh, around the map. So where are you guys going to be stationed up? Uh, I'm going to be stationed up at the main meeting point because that's probably where I'm going to want to be. Okay. All right. So you're yeah, going to I'll be, be with him right there. there. All right. Yeah, nah, nah. All right. So Gino's up here by the crates. Mm -hmm. uh, now here's, here's the thing. Do you have that Warpath rifle on you right now? I'm going to sling it over my back and then uh, go with my, uh, my heavy blaster pistol as my main sidearm for, for a minute until I uh, in, until things get bad and I need to like I don't know do do a ninja flip backwards behind things and unsling my rifle. All right. So if you're going to be acting as a leader uh, from your military experience, you know that's a little weird uh, because because Balder demands blood. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's, it's going to be <laughs> that's fair. It's going to be strange just because of the fact that um, the rifle is almost six and a half feet long, um, and even broken down, it's a it sits in a wide case or a, like a like a carry bag, uh, and it's just going to be looking weird that the commander is running around with a sniper rifle that looks like it can slap God in the pee pee. Okay, um, well, I don't I don't feel too comfortable unslinging it completely, so I'll just say, you know, how about look. Feast with your eyes. Do you not see what we 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 just fended off? I'm I'm not messing around anymore. Gotcha. How about how about we suggest wherever you think your vantage point is going to be, you pre-stash your sniper rifle and keep a regular blaster on you, but make your firing position um, one. Yeah, I'm not giving it to Jr. <laughs> no, I don't want your stinking sniper rifle. I've got my sab, and that baby needs some love. Well, that is that is an additional thought. Um, so. Is up here like a uh, roof or is that like a ridge kind of thing? Uh, hold on. I moved my line of sight. Do that again. That is, uh, that's uh, like a ridge. It's a slight high point. Um, and it's going to be, uh, it, it starts to connect to the ceiling at that point. All right. So before it connects to the ceiling, is, is there enough room up there for, uh, for somebody to like, you know, set up a position and lay prone? Oh, yeah. It, yeah. So that's what you're doing there. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and take the the wisdom from old old as uh, as hell Jr. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, <laughs> I'll 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 stash it up here, and then I'll even throw a little bit of extra camouflage around it just in case somebody happens to be feeling a little bit more, you know. Oh, look at that! Wait, why is there a gun up there? <laughs> gotcha. All right, so. You guys set set yourselves up. Everybody kind of gets in their places. Um, it's it's it doesn't pop off right away, right? So um, the intelligence that you got from that one technician is that uh, you know you guys had uh, incoming uh, with people who are looking to buy some of these munitions. Um, uh, who is the red shirt, Nathan? Uh, well, well, we're, well, remains to be seen. Uh, depends on uh, how many times uh, Jr. tries to tackle a mech. Um, where, real quick, before uh, this pops off, where are you putting the spider-mounted uh, heavy heavy sabs? Um, let's do. I'm gonna go over to. Let's see. Let's ping one of them up here. It's not pinging. Hold on. You have to click and hold. All right. So one of them up there on the raised ability. It's and not then, raised anymore. Well, it's where? still raised. The rubble is still raised right here. Okay. In that, in that area. And then I would put where the mech was here. I would put the second one because it's still, you said, somewhat of a raised vantage point. Well, right where you're pinging, right there, right? So that is kind of like a low stone wall. It probably used to be a building, but it's since crumbled and uh, uh, bits of debris have probably rained into the, uh, the shallow lake right there, right? This building here has been reconstructed. Um, they brought in a fabricator to reconstruct it because it's all basically Adobe anyway. And then there's um, uh, all the debris that was in the inside was cleaned out. 
but is that that where that fallen brick building last time wasn't that raised somewhat from the rest of the area right this here one, just that building in general yeah not any specific location no it's not it's not raised it's a uh, it's it's basically so this is low ground right here and this is all flat and okay. right here it's just a uh, basically like a stone wall uh, what was left of a foundation of a of another building all right. Well, then hmm. we can either put it over here on this raised area where the the mech was, and we set up before, or we gotcha. can put it we can put it in the bottom right corner where that square ante room is, okay, um, to cover our retreat or to cover their retreat if they try. Right on. Okay. So as you guys are kind of doing your deal, um, you have this guy down here, right? Uh, he's part of your mercenary crew. He was very upset that he didn't get the, his team didn't get the lead on this, but he's going to be acting in support. Um, his name is Frank. So he calls up Gino and he's like, Hey, uh, Gino. Yes, boss. How can I help you? He's like, if I was a boss, uh, my crew would be on this instead of yours. He goes, but whatever, Ooh. same team, same dream. Uh, listen, man, uh, we got uh, somebody coming down this hall, so it looks like it's going to be popping off. So what do you do from there? Uh, I would want to move behind this mech and look like I'm trying to, you know, do some service on it because it, like, got stuck or something. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to relay that to the team. going to tell them, all right, get ready for go time. It's going to happen. All right. where, so, uh, where, are they, where are we expecting them to land at or to come in from? Be coming in on this bridge on the lower right-hand corner of the map. All right, so, and these guys are uh, Warlock Company. Yep, they're, they're Yep, they're another team. Um, their their job is to secure the missiles. So while you guys are dealing with the uh, with the crew, uh, their job is to secure the missiles so that they don't get out in the open. So, okay. so before this kicks off, Walt, we just got to acknowledge Ken Foster in the chat. He says, with how many times JR sends objections to HR, <laughs> I get the idea that the chaplain is not happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, plus we've had complaints from, uh, you know, various people throughout the, uh, the galaxy who have said they've, they are less than pleased with his performance. Um, so uh, <laughs> right on. Hey, thanks for, thanks for watching, Ken, man. We appreciate it. So, all right. So, uh, you get the word. Uh, now, it's been from the time you guys have basically dropped this place uh, like a bad habit. And then from the reset time, it was about 12 hours. It has been another 18 hours since then. So, people were kind of, you know, hanging around, smoking and joking, you know, not really doing much of anything. Uh, and then you get the word that people are coming down that that corridor so now people are jumping up they're putting on helmets you know you can hear like straps and uh, ammunition being loaded the charge packs being seated that kind of deal right so um uh kind of like a shifty businessy looking dude comes across the bridge um i don't know why he's coming across so big too he shouldn't be that big but eh, uh, we'll we'll play with what we got he's a large person he, he is a large person, large and in charge, right? So um, he's coming down. He's coming down that that corridor, and he's got two hools with him. Hmm. So, no. if you don't know what a hool is in the Galaxy's Edge universe, it is one of the larger aliens. They look like giant lizard men with uh, fur sticking out of some spots. But the the dangerous part about them is they have a ridge of spines along their backs. Uh, and uh, it's protruding like some of their elbows and shoulders, and those spines ex exude a very deadly poison. All right, uh, one question: so, uh, yep. What does the uh, what does the main guy look like? Uh, probably early fifties, late forties. He has a uh, um, he's got a briefcase. Um, he looks clean cut. Um, he's not wearing any armor. He's wearing like okay. Uh, it's not loud back loud pack. I don't care. No, yeah, <laughs> not All right, I would, I will uh, update the programming of my uh, um, sab, the the sab spiders, yep. and uh, I want them to target the murder porcupines. Okay, you know, uh, how to I, I I have a question, and it's yes. it's going to be kind of going back in time a little bit, but uh, I got mm -hmm. my landmines. Uh, so you're gonna put them like, on that bridge? I would like to place them in places. Yes. All right, hold on one second. Let me get back to that screen. All right. Oh, so, that, that wasn't already done. No, 
No, no, no, no. I was waiting for a time to interject. And, All right, the uh, demolitions expert top. knows where he wants to put them. Go ahead. So, uh, first and foremost, I want to take uh, one of my debt bricks and mm -hmm. uh, break it into four pieces, and uh, gotcha. we're going to we're going to rig that bridge up. Okay. All right. So that bridge is going to be rigged. Gotcha. Yep. Uh, and then for the landmines, uh, I'm actually going to ask the rest of the crew. Uh, I was thinking about putting one here and then putting one there. So because if they want to stand here and try to give support while someone runs over the bridge, there's a nasty little surprise waiting for them. All right. So well, you're going to be – go ahead. I, we don't want to I, – I don't think we should put one right here next to, next to Frank because even though he's an asshole – I don't think he deserves it. And, Frank is uh, an asshole. Fair that's that's and, why I'm I'm asking. And uh, if you're gonna put a landmine over in this area, I would not put it next to Ted because I mean he he's just trying to live life, you know, make yeah. money here and there. So I, 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 I'm not going say, next to Ted. It, it's going right here on this ridge. Oh, next to the thing. Well, I I would I would go. Um, what's the uh, what's the range of those uh, landmines? Uh, like how many squares? Um, so you got five squares out of them. Okay. Oh, oh, oh so I could. So I. Oh, I just put it right there. Called day. So you're gonna put them right there. Where are you facing them? Oh, Back they're into the direct, tunnel. They're directionally charged, like a oh, directional five squares. <laughs> yeah. So, like for example, right? If you're looking at the screen, if you planted one right there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whoop, there you go. There's your gem. Okay, so in that case, so in that charges. case, I'm I'm gonna say, um, put one right here, right there. yep, and then have it be angled towards uh, this. Yeah, I like that. All right, that way, the that way, Frank can Frank can just sit there and be like, Ugh! <laughs> yeah. Let's. I like that idea. Let's do one there. Um, is it in a straight? I know this is gonna be dumb, but square wise, is it just in a straight line or is it like in a cone? In a cone. In a cone. Okay. Yep. You showed about a was that a five by three? Yep. Cone? Five by three. Uh, okay. Well, at that distance. At that distance, yeah. Did you see where I put a mark on the bottom left for the the cannon arm? Yep, I got you. Okay. Yep. All right. So you're gonna you're gonna put one uh, right there. Yes, yep. sir. Right there. there you go. Perfect. All right. Can I put right. uh, suggest to our demolition guy some directional uh, stuff from this race point over here where we've got it's not pinging. <laughs> oh my fucking god! You you switch to the drawing tool. You have to reselect your your mouse cursor. So like in this area, just something where it's slightly raised and angled down at the yeah. Uh, you want to point it directly right here. Yeah. Gotcha. Yes. Uh, well, I, I would suggest uh, uh, before you set them off. Make sure you uh, you tell your coworkers. <laughs> Fire in the hole. All right. So uh, Ken was saying, uh, would a bag of marbles work to trip and slow them down? Uh, part of me is like, what the hell would Legions have marbles on hands for? <laughs> Always right, have I, marbles. I, I have a question with regard to the building. So at one point in time, that building went in somewhere before we collapsed everything. Has that been sealed or is that still a potential point of... Uh, people sneaking up on us. Where are you talking about? Um, up at the top, where, yeah. where it's uh, right up here, because you said that this was a uh, yeah there like a pathway. Yeah, they sealed it up for you, so you wouldn't have to worry about it. Sweet. Okay. Now that does raise another question. How mm -hmm. about over here? Because this was a, a a rabbit rabbit shoot for the guy to run out. Yeah, they have uh, they have troops on the other side of that. All right. Okay. I think we're all set, guys. Uh, yeah, I did want to ask Gino two. before this guy showed up. Um, yeah. Do you want anybody on reception duty, like to to meet them, or are we just going to be standing and kind of milling around and let them oh, make Frank, their own way over to it? Frank, Frank will meet them. You trust Frank? Okay. I I trust Frank. You know, he he's an okay guy when he's not an asshole. So Frank's you know. A dick. But okay. We obviously don't trust him enough to not endanger his life with a directional charge. But hey, 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 hey it's <laughs> not fair. endangered if he stands behind it. Yeah, then it becomes his fault. Fair enough. 
Oh, by the way, I tell Frank, hey, remember there's a charge there. Don't don't trip forward and be a be an idiot. <laughs> sure do. Or can do. I move can I move my guy to the uh to the cannon arm to control it? Sure can. Uh let's see. Where did Hammerhead go? There he's, you is. Oh, I'm drawing on you. My bad. He's right there. It's yep. not pinging. It's not pinging. Um yep, so you're over here with the cannon arm? Yep. Are you out in the open like, "Hey, look at my cannon arm." Or are you uh behind the cannon arm and just, you know, uh uh like in the back passage over here? Yeah, if we're in the back passage, we're just out of sight. Okay. All right, so uh, the guy comes up, and uh, he gets escorted by Frank, who then repositions himself. The two hools come with you, or come with them, and are flanked by two of the security from Frank's team. Uh, so you guys kind of have guns on each other. Uh, the two hools are carrying um, kind of like really ultra-modern versions of current-day M249 saws. These things have like belts of rounds in them. Ooh, uh, throwers. Yeah, uh, and the uh, the hules are large, so e each one is a little over eight and a half feet. Um, you know, they they kind of sneer at you, and and like there's some like you know like that throaty growl that you have out of an alligator, where it's like ooh, goo, 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 almost like a heavy engine sound as they breathe. Um, the uh, the guy with the briefcase and the you know the the bad tan suit, he sits, he walks up, and he looks at Gino, and he says. Are you the one in charge here? Yeah. Are you ready to do this deal, or uh, we got to just jerk each other off around here? Well, uh, I definitely didn't come for that. <laughs> Family well, show. Well, tough Family shit. Show. Let's get going. <laughs> open to it. He says, so I have some concerns. Every Everybody in the uh, in this part of the the galaxy's edge has said that they've managed to get their hands on the new legion ap missiles everybody's got their own little angle and two other two other sellers i've been to have uh kind of met an unfortunate end because they wasted my time are you going to be wasting my time here today mcr or do you have legit missiles that i can use going forward I gesture around and I say, do you not see the kind of crap that we've had to go through? How this place has been, you know, battered and, and we've, we've rearmed. We're not screwing around here. And if you're going to waste our time, we're going to deal with you the same way we, we dealt with the people that came in trying to take the AP missiles from us. The, uh, the two hools get closer to him, kind of like uh, protecting wise. And, he, you know, he just puts up his hand like, no, no, no. He goes, look, nobody's trying to waste either of our times. But before I put down hard credit on this, I need to get inside those crates and make sure those missiles do what, they, what they're supposed to do. You're not setting off one of those missiles around here, I'll tell you I that. Don't need to set the missile off. I just need to get into the operating system and look at one of the warheads. Everything cool? Then everything's cool. I hand you a case. You hand me some crates. We walk out of here, no problem, no issues. You don't let me look at the crates. I'm just going to walk. And before you guys get any fancy ideas with all your guns and fancy security and talk, talk of how tough you are, he, opens, he brings up the case, clicks the two latches on the side, and then opens it, right? You can see a, uh, a routed, dedicated cred stick hooked into like a small device. Um, uh, the cred stick is reading serial numbers uh, like in rapid successions going across. Uh, but beside that, um, there's what looks like two tubes with um, one has a yellow kind of smoky looking fluid. The other one is, is this is this die hard with a vengeance? Uh, I don't know about that. I don't I don't think I've ever seen it. Okay, if if you watch Die Hard with a Vengeance, it's like a there's a suitcase bomb where it has like two tubes of different uh different liquids, and then oh, when yeah. they merge, they 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 turn to explosive thing. Uh, that that uh, now I feel cheated because I could have made some money back in the nineties. Um, so uh, so he sits there and he says, before anybody gets any idea about doing anything stupid, he goes, these two vials are coded to my vital signs. If I go down. They go off. If one of my guys goes down, they go off. 
He goes, so let's just make this deal. I get out of your face. You get money to put towards your little war effort, and everybody's happy. We're good? Uh, I say, yeah, we're good. Uh, do Now, here's a question. Uh, I send a message to Gino, and I say, I don't trust this guy. Let's just ice him now. Now, um, I, 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 I'm assuming I got like a throat mic or something like that, where mm -hmm. I, or something I can silently like talk over a Mori, right? Yeah, and you could of course walk away from them to let them do their thing or not, and then, uh, you know, it's a sub vocal mic, so it's right around your throat, so mm -hmm. you can you can talk very softly and have them uh, and uh, have them do their thing. So before he. He walks away since I took a detailed list of what we have. I'll yep. I'll walk up to him and I'll be like, "Cool, let's uh let's look at these fancy toys you're wanting to buy. Welcome to the toy shop. What you want is what I got. Let's go look." <laughs> uh, That's I, awesome. I, well, when when Quinn walks up, I uh I start uh talking to Mori. I'm like, "Hey, you think you can do a remote hack on that briefcase and uh?" And start spoofing some vitals so that way we can uh, we can deal with them if need be. And yep. uh, after I talk to him, I uh, I asked, I sent a little message to Scrapper again. You know, made contact. Uh, what do we gotta do with these guys again? Just kill them, or do we need something from them? He he comes over the comm. He goes, roll them up if you can. If you can't, he goes, you know, you were Legion once. You know the you know the initials better than I do. He goes, but listen, uh, I'm getting, uh, uh, I'm switching you over to Frank. So you hear a pop, an auditory pop in your uh, in your uh, ear bead, mm -hmm. and uh, Frank comes over and he goes, "Hey, some of my guys on the outside um, have just gone quiet. Uh, Scrapper is sending a squad to go check on them, uh, but I don't like this. Uh, they were positioned on that uh, that upper quadrant where that." where that uh, doorway le led to the outside. So what he's talking about is up in here. Yeah. Right. And he's like, he's like, uh, I just had two guys go quiet and uh, they're not responding to hail. So uh, I'm setting a squad up to go check them out. I'm right. uh, retasking the drone that I used earlier to go skirt and, uh, and investigate as well. If you do that, it's going to have to go all the way out, all the way outside, and then try it's going to be a good 10, 15 minutes, and the drone is going to be through too much stone. Yeah. It's not going to be able to transmit. Hold, hold on, JR. Usually adjust this hold, hold, hold on. Hold on, guys. Guys. So I was going to say, uh, I, I let, uh, I, I, we, we got to let Moray hack first. That way we can, uh, we can act, uh, do things without having to worry about. Well, me exploding number one because I'm the closest, and Quinn. <laughs> You're replaceable. No, no, you. Um, <laughs> and also, um, I'll, I'll let the because uh, I'm assuming that these guys are are those just techs or are those uh, part of Frank's crew. Uh, the guys who are who look like all the technicians are actual technicians from uh, from the ship. So they're okay. from your they're from your team. Uh, the only the only uh, guy that you don't uh, what do you call it that you couldn't replicate was the uh, the guy that you guys captured because everybody else you shot. Last yeah. Time. So. So how trained are these techs? Do they know to get the hell out of dodge and stay down and stay low? Well, they have basic uh, combat training, so, so you know. So they'll get out of the way when the shooting starts. We don't have yeah. to worry about them. Okay. Oh yeah, you're not gonna have to worry about them. Right. So they're they're warlock company. They they know what's up. It's not like the first time they've been shot at or right, the so that. For the big scalies. So what? Yep, the hools. Yep, for the big scalies. Uh, do I? Uh, I know what weapons they're carrying, right? Yep. It's kind of like a, uh, like savage tech from how you explained it. Um, it's a little, it's a little old school. Uh, old. so around the time before blasters, but uh, belt it looks, fed slug throwers. Yeah, belt fed fed slug throwers, and uh, from what you can see, you can kind of, you can kind of see um. Uh, you know, markings that don't uh, correspond to galactic standard. So they're probably made from their home world. Uh, uh, but they're not old. They're very well, they look very well maintained. Um, the ammunition doesn't have that, like, that brass color where it's, like, like eroded and it's starting to look right. green. Uh, the, the brass looks new. Uh, the ammo bags, and, and, and uh, it looks like they're carrying 
uh, full on drums on their hips for them if they have to do a, a bag change and reload or relink. Um, it, it looks like they know what they're doing. It looks like they're trained. Uh, and from the way that, uh, why don't, uh, does anybody have like criminal underworld or sweet streetwise on their shoes? I, I have, um, I street have street wise. Wise. all right. One, one at a time, kids. Let's I, all have play nice. I have, uh, oh, where was it? I have dark net and streetwise. All right. So give me a street rise roll, uh, and just, uh, let's see how much you guys know about what you're looking at. Oh, if it's, uh, oh, if it's oh my God, that's a 17. <laughs> Uh, so, would this be Darknet or just Streetwise? Streetwise. Okay. All right. What about the Night Broker? Since this is uh, the Undermarket, do I get the uh, extra dice? Yeah. What What is your Seven. Night Broker thing? It says uh, Streetwise 3D and then Night Market Gun Brokers 4D. Um. Yes, you might have dealt with these guys before doing that. Go ahead. So roll All the right. four. You're going to roll 4D and take three. All right. I got a 16. That works. Yeah, so you guys are, Dark Angel. Yeah, you guys are pretty knowledgeable about this. What'd you get? Ooh. I got fifteen. Okay. So this is um I got a twelve on my streetwise. This guy is uh from an area of of uh, of edge space that's just off the Sinasian arm. Um the the uh the population uh was from a part of early human expansion with a heavy Russian slant to it. Um, these guys are known for their, uh, their mafia. And that's probably what you're dealing with. Um, they prefer to deal in like slug throw type weapons because they can manufacture them cheaply. And because a lot of times when they have to deal with Republic army or Republic intelligence, your armors, uh, their armors have a tendency to be blaster rated, but not slug rated. Uh, so it's kind of like going old school to defeat the new tech. Uh, but these these hools look well trained. They're not just standing there looking. Um, uh, why did Moray pop up again in my stream? That's weird. Um, they don't look. Uh, they don't look like they're just. Dur -dur -dur. You know, they're they're actually standing there. They're scanning for threats. They're watching you guys and how you move around each other. If uh, if uh, somebody goes to reposition themselves. Uh, for whatever reason, like, uh, uh, you know, Moray moving around the mech and stuff like that. They're actually very, very focused, laser focused. What the hell? Where did he go? I bet he disconnected. Are there you we here go. again? I, I, had, I had some uh, internet problems. Gotcha. Right? So these guys, these, these hools look trained, and, and they don't look like idiots. So um, I will um, reposition well, the the spider bot that's in the bottom right uh, antechamber and just have it move forward so it can see out that opening okay and, and bring its weapon to bear and I don't care if they see it I want them to know we're uh, aware of their threat so right. yep but I want I want it to stay well out of the range of the boom booms that uh, that we set up good now now so, my uh, question is go ahead, Daniel now my question is uh Moray, can you do your hack real quick? And as soon as you get your hack done, then uh, then I can we we can start moving things along because uh, I need to talk to this guy and be like, hey, so I I know you're you're your neck of town, and uh, yeah, I would like to add one of my two base competency die to help him, and if that's possible, with hacking from a distance. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to do that. I've already got five you, d six to roll, man. You, you you can you can try yelling at him. <laughs> you can do um, it. Hack his freaking 12. balls off. All right, so your top three are nine. So you got a twelve. Uh, yeah, yeah um, this guy is running serious layers of encryption around uh, his uh, all the stuff that's broadcasting. He's got some sort of a cell phone, and uh, he's got. Uh, um, he, he, not like a cell phone, but like, you know, like a personal wearable computer. And then, of course, he's got the signals that are going in and out of that case. Uh, there is some serious tech going in and out of that case, and you were just barely able to break in. Uh, you Do you lock the tech down so that uh, whatever happens to them, it, uh, it gets spoofed? Yes. All right. All right. So that's that. All right. So um, so the, the, the reason why I, I was asking about the uh, the hools and their mm -hmm. armament is because while everyone was doing things and 
I was over there putting on a big show. I'm going to be like, Gator Boys, I see you're rolling some good tech, but, you know, what about Gator what about boys. getting something uh, something modern? Something uh, a little more pack, boom, bang. Know what I mean? You probably don't, but we're going to go there. XO the arms dealer. <laughs> right? <laughs> Bring it. Um, He's well, going to have a side business with Murder Barbie. One of the uh, one of the hools kind of like does one of those things where he like cranes his like alligator like neck around his boss, and the boss just shrugs, um, and he go and you know he looks at you and he goes, he goes, we like boom boom. What you <laughs> we gonna, have? Uh, we gonna have a good relationship then, better than my ex wife, that's for sure. But I'm talking Legion Tech. Get some real big bang going. Put you on the front lines, make you go, oh damn, look at this. <laughs> the other one who wasn't interacting with you, like, just nods his head and goes, oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> Big Scaly gets it. Um, the, uh, the, what do you call it, the weapons broker that you guys are dealing with, he looks at you, Gino, and he says, so uh, can I talk to the case or not? Like, am I, 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 to I come over I and, I, and, I, and I, uh, I, I, I gesture him and say, yeah, let's go talk to the case and, you know, Walk him. Uh, I walk him up to the case while uh, while the hools are are while while Quinn drags the hools off. Um, I'm gonna the, I'm gonna double click my throat mic so to give him a confirmation of it. Gotcha. Uh, all, right. all right. So, so he starts. Hold on. He starts. Uh, he pries open one of the cases. He pulls out a small device and he first he first he hits it to the launcher to make sure that the launcher uh, profiles are actually working. And then he starts dis disassembling uh, one of the warheads. Um, he doesn't look at all surprised by what he's finding, and he's and but once again, you notice that these hools are paying attention to the perimeter, and they're paying attention to him. So what do you do? So uh, okay. hold on, before we do that, can you explain real quick then how those competency dice that are on the sheet work? I thought it was to assist your buddies when you when you chose to. Yes, but you have to give me. Uh, well, this this all goes back to like like stuff we were talking before the show, right? You can't sit there and uh, when somebody's in a helicopter, uh, yep, Balder knows what's up, right? So you can't sit there and when somebody's in a helicopter, um, hacking. Like assist them in the hack when you need to be sitting right next to them. So you're 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 all the way on the other end of the uh, of the um, the complex. So you can't assist him in that hack because of where you are positionally. If you were right next to him, you could have you you probably could have done something. So is it only allowing you to assist when you already have the competency otherwise on your character sheet? Yeah. Uh, well, if you don't have any competency dice, you you can't uh, you can't add to what you're doing but the uh, the competency dice doesn't let you let you do the action the competency dice comes as a result of the action so like for example say you were right next to him and you were trying to assist that hack right, right. you sit there and you broadcast uh, a couple of different things that that the computer has to run through and run down and it becomes distracted using more computing power on that side he can slip in and go in right if you roll high enough you can give him an extra die, a competency die, to roll with his stuff. Okay. Right? So, And then at that point, he can use it to either assist his role or change the narrative or, or what have you. So, right? uh, Quinn, I, I see you talking in the private chat on the right. Competency die are located on the right-hand side of your character sheet. It says comp die or comp dice, and then, then we have like a base comp dice of two and then current is uh is whatever the current one is so okay. you can get like extra ones like you got an extra competency die um added on so you can use that as like a temporary like one-time use kind of thing oh okay. for the for the viewers since we're talking about this can you pop up the character seat just so they can see what we're talking about sure you can use mine since we're talking about it <laughs> yeah, because I like the layout of these character sheets a lot. Yeah, they they do look nice, and they are intuitive to it's, find stuff. They are it's really easier than apparently a not one. murder hobo. <laughs> no, no, so, I'm just an idiot. So there's oh, okay, Scrapper, your team leader. Um, yeah. uh, so the competency die are uh, right where you see uh, where it's uh, in the top right hand corner. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the character sheets are are pretty uh, are a lot of fun. Um, I didn't want uh, I didn't want them to look just like a blank piece of white paper 
And uh, yeah, uh, everything's laid out pretty, pretty neat and pretty easy to use. Uh, this is a pretty simple system. You're not really struggling with uh, how to try and figure things work. The base idea of the system is I roll dice, you roll dice, whoever gets the most, you know, the biggest result, that's who wins the, that particular contest. Right. So, but the benefit of the system is like uh, you notice that in, in, in what you're seeing here, you're not getting um, standard like hit points or anything like that. Your resistances, which is the, uh, the uh, composure, fortitude, reaction, and will, um, those kind of act as your hit points. So if you take damage, you can take it from any of those points. So like if you get shot at and you take it in your fortitude, that means you got hit in the body and now you're hurt. Um, if you take it into your reaction, you tried to jump out of the way of the bullet and you twisted your ankle, now you're not as fast. Um, if uh, you take it to either your composure or will, um, it has the... Uh, <laughs> Nathan, now, now. Um, so if you uh, if you take it to your composure or will, it's because you know the bullet struck next to you. You might not be as willing to stick your head outside to take another shot again. So you know that's that's kind of how that works. All right. So um, he starts uh, examining the cases. He's uh, you know he's plugging things in. He, he unscrews and looks at the empty warhead, and then he kind of like looks back at you, Gino, and he goes, "Nice. It's exactly what I need." So what do you say? Can we can we make a deal here? Everybody friends? We good? You know, I, I would have uh, been willing to make a deal with you had uh, I not gotten reports from my uh, my crew on the outer edge of, uh, of our complex that uh, they stopped reporting. So you want to explain that? Is that you or is that somebody else that we need to worry about? Because if it's you, we got a problem. He stands up and he says something in like a guttural very twisted language <laughs> uh, nathan in the chat's like why are you guys still alive uh <laughs> so uh he starts uh saying something in a very guttural twisted language and it uh the holes kind of like perk their perk their heads up and respond in kind he so goes do yeah. any of it it's no mention of languages is is mentioned in the character sheet mm -hmm. do any of us speak cool no Okay. No, it's very. Or do we have translator very, software? You normally in your like normal armor would have translator software. I have. Well, I have my data pad out. So when I get a translation going, then. Uh yeah, you want to do it? So go ahead. Yeah. And, uh, just go ahead and use your your standard hacking. Okay. So that would be. Would that be three D then, or would that be no. network intrusion? No, it would be the three D. So go ahead. Okay. Whoa. Fifteen. Oh, nice. All right, so um, the translation comes across the bottom, uh, and he says, do we have people on the outside? And the one responded, uh, he goes, we do, but they're in a holding pattern in the ship. He goes, we didn't want to spook anybody. So he nods. He looks at you, Gino, and he says, it's not us. And I nod uh, my head agreeing. Uh -oh. and, I'm, and I say, all right, well, my guy confirms, confirms this, so... If that's the case, then we have a problem. So you better get your hools uh, ready to defend, because uh, I, if if you want to walk home with these uh, these uh, warheads, then them, their enemy of my enemy is our is our friend kind of thing right now. I feel you. I feel you. He he like double snaps to the hools. Um, they chart. They drop the. Uh, they open the feed tray covers lock and load the links, and then uh, pull back the open bolt. Uh, one of them sits there and says, damn. <laughs> uh, uh, um, at, at that moment, I go, I'm with the lizard boys. We doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I go ahead. I, and, I, and I, I'm and just I, saying Quinn is going to be the voice of Lau Pack when we make the movie. Hell yeah. No, no, I, he's I, the voice I, of EXO. He's the voice I, of EXO. I ask uh, the 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 broker dude uh, what what is uh, what is uh, his fortitude is or his uh, his God I'm sorry I've, I've had Gino's, ask, Gino's Forte, asking the guy Forte. hey what's yeah. on your character sheet my dude <laughs> exactly <laughs> hey what are you scalping <laughs> he, he says he uh, what do you call it he uh, he opens his jacket and he's like. Nice and easy, buddy. Nice and easy. He pulls out an SMG, extends the stock. 
He goes, I'll stand here and help some of your boys uh, secure these crates so that nothing's going down. Uh, and then uh, my my friends here can, uh, can uh, what do you call it, uh, assist you in uh, holding the place down. Where Where's the direction of threat? I, I point at uh, the direction where uh, our, our guys went dark, and you I look, say... He, he's like, hold on one second. And he, more of that guttural language into his watch. Mm-hmm. Um, after a minute, um, we get uh, uh, Frank. Uh, it, one of Frank's guys is in that like little cubby hole at the bottom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, what are you laughing at? Uh, Ken Foster describing Quinn. It's like hearing Pee Wee Herman's older brother who was in the Marines on speed when I hear Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even mad. No, nope, I approve. <laughs> Uh, so, while, while this is happening, I gra- I jump on my mic and I tell Gino, you should probably let Scrapper know what's happening. Yeah. I, I, I was going to ask if I had to roll again to get a, get a translation or if I would have seen that. All right. So what, what, at, what was going on? <laughs> oh. So uh, another like thing of Hools comes through. Um, as he passes Frank, the one in the lead with the, with the odd colorations on his uh, skin and armor, he sits there and he's as he passes Frank, he goes, he gives a shocky chakra sign and he's like, "What's up, bro?" <laughs> um, All right, Gino, I want to shoot. I this like guy. these fools. Can we? Can we? Can we, can like we just shoot these lot. guys? I like uh, these fools a lot. Oh. They, uh, they, what do you call it? They walk. They, they don't even kind of like acknowledge your troops. They, they watch the broker who just kind of nods. The lead who nods, and they're heading toward that opening in the top left hand corner. Um, as he walks up, he walks to he walks to uh, Moray uh, with his hools in tow. They're all carrying those crazy those crazy um, uh, heavy saw gunners uh, saw, uh, saws. And he says, uh, "Threat this way." Oh uh, yeah. He goes <laughs> very <laughs> articulate, good human. And he just kind of like pats your shoulder, and they start walking toward I'm, that. I'm going to react like a tech who doesn't have experience with them, and just kind of back up slowly. Yeah, they're huge. Uh, the the one in the with the bluish accents. Um, he's he's closing in on nine feet. He's very large. Uh, I go ahead and I make my way up to my little uh, sniper position, and I and I angle up towards the. Uh, towards uh where where the guys are potentially coming and uh yeah i i i get i get the uh the nice uh armor piercing incendiaries uh loaded up so um frank uh starts pushing over some radio traffic into the uh over the comm and he says uh hey i got one of my guys uh looking to report in i'm just going to push this uh net wide is that cool uh yeah so you hear kind of like the rustling of trees and branches from outside, and you hear, "Yeah, we found them. Uh, it, yeah, they're they're pretty messed up. Um, they uh, it looks like somebody took a big bite out of them." Hmm. So uh, can I use uh, Streetwise or or let me see what else my character sheet has? Uh, survival. Uh, uh, to, to uh, you know, take a guess on on what that is. What of what the bites are? Yeah, uh, the particular planet you're on. You're in a jungle region. It could be any number of predators. Without seeing it, um, it'd be impossible to tell. Okay. All so, right. uh, yeah. I you guess. Hear, yeah, you hear another one of Frank's guys call in, and he's like. He's like, hey, uh, I found the other guy. Yeah, he's he's mangled pretty bad. Um, he's uh, he's got uh, uh, a couple of bite wounds, uh, upper shoulder, uh, but it looks like somebody tried to smack his armor pretty good. Smack his Can armor. Can I reposition up to uh, up to the top here, to the top of the building, with my yep. carbine? Who's that? Who's that? Uh, Max. Archangel? That's uh, Max. Max. Yeah. yeah. And I'm okay. gonna re. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm gonna re. Overwatch my- this entryway. I'm gonna re-angle my my um, um, mech arm cannon and angle it towards the uh, the direction of the threat. 
All right. All right. I just and I just would like a little side note that like the entire time people are doing stuff tactically, I'm hearing this and I'm just talking to the two lizards and be like, listen, if you have some angry cousins or something, you need to get on the phone. Let them know this is not okay. <laughs> trying to do business. I don't, I don't want to be gator food. I'm going to go ahead and reposition the mechs to where they're covering uh, the three known entrance points that we have seen. Okay. So uh, <laughs> just just to be prepared. Gotcha. All right. Uh, Ken thinks Quinn could play a fair Randy Savage. Right on. <laughs> oh, so uh, the guy comes over the uh, <laughs> the guy comes back over the comms and he says, "Yeah, it looks like uh, yeah, it looks like somebody tapped his armor pretty good." Um, I'm not seeing blast marks. These these look like bullet holes. Uh, guys, given when, when when we when we have going back to like my my you know, previous experience in the Legion kind of stuff that what that we went through. I, I, I started saying, you know, I get the feeling like we might be going against some uh, some kind of savages because they kinda like to <gasps> they kinda like to eat people, um, from what I hear. Uh calories. they just see us as calories. And uh and if if we're seeing slug thrower holes, yeah. So I I think we got a problem on our hands. And could I have if? Go oh, we gonna? I was, I was gonna say, could I have hidden my like better weapons within the mech I was working on? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yep. Now, and, uh, I, uh, I, I, I holler down to, uh, to uh, the broker, and I and I say, what do you think are the chances that we could uh, be dealing with a savage incursion? He's like, uh, I haven't heard of savages in the last. 10, 15 years. And uh, it, I'm, I'm assuming when he, when, when we went, uh, uh, you know, net wide with the, uh, with the guys check in, they, that he heard some of that. Oh yeah. Okay. So what are, what are we getting from our eyes in the sky? Cause they've got satellites overhead. Um, they weren't watching that area, the outward patrol. They were watching the entrances, making sure, and, and they were also training most of their surveillance on the airship that just dropped off these these hole of hools. Wow, that hurt. That really hurt to say. <laughs> do, do they know, um, other than that hull of hools, do they know if any other aircraft landed in our general vicinity? Hool hall. There were no aircrafts that they saw. Nothing broke the airspace other than the other than the broker's ship, which is right now it it dropped at the at the beach that, where you guys landed, dropped off the hole of hools, and then took off back into the air again. Can I do uh say that ten times fast, please? It's like Jason and Nick hate their narrators. <laughs> What's uh, that, Moray? Can I do a scan to see if I can pick up any other kind of comm frequencies going off? Sure. Uh nine or less. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Nine, nine or would that be higher. don't you nine or more? Yeah, nine or more. Would that be uh, intrusion? Yep. No, no, not intrusion. Just your regular uh, technology okay. roll. Uh, Fifteen again. <laughs> nice. Same roll. Holy crap. Um, no, there's no. Uh, what do you call it? Um, there's no. Um, like okay. other broadcast going on. There's the broadcast that you guys have with each other. There's the broadcast that the uh, the whole team have with each other, and uh, then there's uh, there's one other network that you can't pin down. Uh, All right, that, so that that they it, they seem to be broadcasting on, so it's probably a private net. So given that we have experience dealing with criminal underworld, since we are criminals ourselves as mercenaries, do we know of any other unit besides these wholes that would be using um, slug throwers instead of blasters? Oh, there's tons. There's tons yeah. of people that 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 use slug throws in this uh, region of space, uh, just because blasters uh, blasters cost money, and uh, the bullets you can get a fabricator for less than the cost of a blaster and make all the bullets you want. But but how many of of, of the alien races do we know that just like decide to you know eat like on the go like oh look it's a human let me just have some Mickey D's right now you know. Well, dogs or dobies. 
it, it depends because you know, once again, the the dobies are, are hyper aggressive, but they're not usually outside of Sidon. Uh, you got the hools that are hyper aggressive and will oftentimes eat human enemies, and then you got the drusik, okay. which are hyper uh, hyper aggressive and are known to use firearms. Uh, but they're because of their um, uh, because of their their uh, the amount of and this is. Sometimes you go down a rabbit hole like uh, the uh, the Galaxy's Edge wiki, and you find things like uh, the Drusic have 18 testicles in their body, mm -hmm. which constantly push testosterone like to make them hyper savage. Uh, they can do the same thing. So there's a couple of different races that do that. Hey, uh, with blasters for, and bolt throwers. That's scary. For my own peace of mind, um, can I get... Can I get on the comms with Frank and have him connect me with that guy that found the bodies? Yep. What um, do you ask? So I get on the comms and say, hey, those bodies, they had bites taken out of them and bullet holes, but did any of them have any big cuts or stab wounds? Uh, hold on. Uh, you hear him like uh, like shuffling with something, moving through uh, underbrush and, and like getting at the body. You can hear his kit kind of moving around the microphone, kind of uh, shifting and moving. And he says... Yeah, they got these. It's weird. They got these like weird spines uh, right in the back of this guy's neck too. Weird spines. Yeah, they, they almost look like uh, almost look like uh, like quills. Oh. Hmm. And that's where we'll pick up next time uh, when <laughs> we pick up with uh, Operation Loki. Darn! It wasn't savages. Podcast. I was hoping <laughs> on the Galaxy's Edge podcast. <laughs>